Okay, we are going to go ahead and start with our second session of the afternoon. Thanks for joining us. It's fun each time to see new names joining for the session. So we're glad that you're here. I'm going to let uh, Melody and Emily talk to you for a little bit, and then I will introduce our speaker and we'll get started. All right, I'm Melody Offield and uh, welcome back. I'm looking forward to this session that Connie's gonna do. It looked really fun when we were practicing on Monday. I'm excited to see what she's gonna share with all of you guys. I'll be manning the chat like I did in the last session. And so if you have some uh, questions about Ag in the Classroom, I'll try to keep up. Audrey and Emily help me, because um, sometimes I'm slow. <laughs> but that's, that's the main uh, function that I'll be uh, doing today. I hope you guys enjoy. Thanks again for joining us. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Emily Agu, and I'm currently pretty excited because it's thundering at my house. So I hope it comes with rain. Um, but anyway, welcome to this afternoon's session. I am in charge of the Q&A. So if you have any questions um, directly for our presenter, which is Connie for this session, please put those questions in the Q&A box and we will get those answered as quickly as possible. Um, that may involve me either typing an answer or interrupting Connie and, and asking the question of her. So just let us know if you have any questions. I'm sure Connie will appreciate them. Okay, and some of you are asking about the book with the state symbols that we mentioned on our last one. Um, if it's not on the order form yet, it's because we don't have it in the office yet. So uh, we'll be adding that as soon as we actually have it where we can send it out. So that's the update on that. This is Connie Siner from Frontier Oklahoma or Red Rock, depending on where you're at in the state, but her school's Frontier. And she gets to have the fun job of being an elective teacher who gets to teach ag in the classroom all the time. So for many of you, you're adding ag in the classroom in with your, your lessons to help teach your standards. And she gets to do that a little bit more frequently than you do. But she's also been in your, in your shoes where she was using it to cover her standards um, for her individual classes. So she's going to get to talk to you from both sides today. So Connie, welcome and we're going to let you take it away. Okay, can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. Hey, I'm Connie Siner. Um, I teach sixth grade math and science at Frontier, and I do get to teach an elective. It's just at the start of the day, um, right when everybody, you know, before school starts. So it's, it's kind of fun to get started. Um, I'm gonna take you through a lesson called Mud in the Water. And we're gonna show you a few things we do in the electives and uh, how we use the website. It's, there's a lot of information on the website. I see more every day, where we get our info from, and then we're gonna end up making a model for, um, from the lesson. So um, I'm gonna start by sharing a, my screen. I've made a slideshow. Um, the first five slides are what the kids' presentations might look like. So, there we go. Okay. Takes me a while to get going. Let's go back. Watching it backwards. Okay, so the kids, um, we get on the website and they they pick. I'll show you later, but they'll pick either a, a crop or an animal to do their um, slideshow on. So they've got their title. This one is mud in the water. So um, I can't read it all. How do I get the, the pictures out of the way? Is there a way to do that? Yeah, on your computer, typically you can just get a hold of um, the top of like the, if you were gonna move any other screen, Got you it. just move them around. There Perfect. you go. 
Thank you. So thousands of years ago, people began to farm because they found they could produce more food than they could by hunting and gathering. So here they're getting into some transitions. Over the years, people discovered that some farming practices were harmful to the land. It might be cutting down trees, clearing vegetation or overgrazing. And it caused big problems. It destroyed habitats, uh, created silt covered spawning beds. There were fewer game fish, more rough fish. There's too much weed and algae growth and unpleasant views. And that all became, that was because of the water runoff and fertilizers, manure, and soil. And then this is just a little word cloud that I got off of ABC. And that's the actual vocabulary, except the so long native grasses. Um, that's the actual vocabulary um, in the lesson, so. Okay, when the kids do their um, slideshows, they're pretty knowledgeable about images, fonts, color, and of course typing. Some of them know how to do the copy and paste and some of them are pretty good at searching. What we do in the classroom is we introduce the usage rights on the photos that they put into their slideshow, plagiarism of course, uh, they have to edit each other's work, not necessarily the fact part of it, but the, the grammar part, uh, punctuation. Uh, of course, getting up in front of the classroom and doing their presentations. Uh, we teach to the lower grades. They'll make a slideshow and we'll go down to the kindergarten or pre-K and uh, help the teacher out there. And then slideshow, of course. This is Oklahoma Ag in the Classroom website. And I think Dusty went over quite a few things earlier. Um, the lessons are cross-referenced. If you can't remember what a lesson is, uh, you remember it had to do with soil. So you might just go to the S, okay? or um, agricultural topic. This is how we go in and pick our slides. They can go in and pick animals. Okay, there's tons there. Or they can pick a, pick a crop. The other categories, if you're teaching, if you've got uh, world history or um, social studies, you need something else, you can go in Again, tons of information in here. Okay, and that's all on the lessons tab. Okay, then over in the resources, this is, we use this a lot. Classroom resources under the resources tab. I'm gonna go down to nutrition posters. Okay. Audrey, are these still available? Yes, they are. We have classroom sets or, and whenever you um, request these, they're on the request form. So you'll get all six of these, how would you rather eat that she's showing you. And then there's six more in the package that are did you know fun facts. And um, Connie's got a great resource that she created that she's gonna talk to you about that will um, we'll send you links for that first week of August when we send everything else. So if you don't have these posters, you're gonna to want to request them so that you can do her activities. The first year we had these posters, uh, you know, you've always got that time to fill after testing. And we hung these out, we have a huge uh, school lounge and we hung these posters, kind of hid some to where they had to find them. But we went through, we had a scavenger hunt and I've got three scavenger hunts that I've made up and the answers are all there. But for instance, uh, how would you rather eat fiber? They get a paper with 20 questions on it. And it might say, let's take carrots right here. 
it might say, how many calories would you consume if you ate three servings of raw carrots? Okay, and they can't come back with the number 52. They've got to figure um, the actual amount. You can get decimals in. You could, uh, you could come over here to whole wheat spaghetti and say, what if I ate a half of a serving size of whole wheat spaghetti? So they would have to divide there. So and I've got three of those that I've sent to the girls. Um, that you're welcome to use. Go back to resources. This is the calendar at the very bottom of the resource tab. At the beginning, of the beginning sorry, the beginning of the year when I'm filling out um, just kind of the basics before school started on uh, in my planner, I'll go to August. What do I want to talk about in August? And here are all of the August uh, things that you can look lessons up. September, of course, Labor Day, ladybugs. So it kind of helps with that. Let's see resources, classroom resources. For middle school, the Red Dirt Groundbreakers, we've used this. This has all the Oklahoma history, people that had something to do in history. Um, last year, we did the 101 Ranch. So we've got Bill Pickett. So those are pretty neat, pretty interesting for the kids to read. Okay, what else have I got? The fruits, nuts, and veggies. Sorry about that. This is a book that kind of reminds me of the, the book that you guys are getting ready to send out that you've just created. It has everything in it. It has games. Some of them might be a little lower, lower level, but there are things, there's uh, the recipes in there. And so those are kind of fun. We've done this with marshmallows we did, we did Play-Doh in the microwave. I really like doing it with a hot plate better, but they enjoyed watching how it changed, so. Okay. Teacher tools. I've been using Ag in the Classroom for I don't know, over 10 years, I know. And I've never, I had never gone into the teacher tools. So I'm embarrassed to even say that. Um, I use this, whoops, sorry. Go back. Pulled this up the other day when my principal asked me to see if I could get 15 students in my classroom. And my classroom is 27. There just happens to be 27 across by 28 and I've got them in there, so. And I'm stuck, there we go. Uh, there's, there's things here for science, there uh, for ELA, and of course math. So make sure you go look through that. I've got to get back in there. This is hard without anybody to talk to. 
I agree. Sometimes you feel like you're there by yourself. But I know. Trust me, you've got people watching. Okay. <laughs> Thanks for showing the website because I think there's so much on our website and it's true that we just get on and we go to where we're used to because we're in a hurry. So this is great that you're showing them all the different uh, places that they can go and resources they can use. We appreciate that. Good, good. Okay. Um, ag facts. The kids use this more than anything. And I'm going to pick peanuts just because that's, that's my favorite one. Okay. These are just, these are all facts. Okay. So if you have a bulletin board and you want to make a quick bulletin board, copy, paste, and then when you get that pasted, um, put them all, each, each one, pick out the ones you want. Um, and then, you know, give it a new font, a new color, print it out, and your bulletin board is done. It's amazing. And the kids will go in here. Um, I don't let them, when they do a slideshow or, a, or we do a bulletin board, I don't let them copy and paste that part. They have to pick out what they want it to say and how they want it to be, uh, how they want it to be read by the kids in the hall. And they write all those down. We usually do about eight to 10. And, um, and then they can type it out. Because if I let them copy and paste, they would never even read it. They'd copy it and paste it and stick it up on the wall. So, and I tell them if it's very long, just keep it to one, maybe two sentences because the, kid, because the kids walking down the hall aren't gonna stop and read it if it's too long, so. Okay. Well, it's in the way. I'll go back here. Okay. Okay, this is from the scavenger hunt. This is this one isn't actually on there, but it's a um, an example, one bale of cotton weighs about 480 pounds. We'll make 215 pairs of blue jeans, 680,000 cotton balls, or six and a half million cotton swabs. And the scavenger hunt question might be, how many pairs of jeans can be made from seven cotton bales? So they would have to multiply. You'd have to take the pairs of jeans. They'd have to get the right number out of there and multiply by seven. So uh, they'll come up and they'll look you right in the face and they'll say, it is not on the poster. And I'll say, yes, it is. And we'll go look at the poster and they'll say, no, it's not on there. And, and then they'll be kind of embarrassed. Okay, Dusty looked at this on the last one, um, the National Ag in the Classroom website. I was talking to the girls the other day and they asked if I use this website for anything else. And I said, no. And I thought they were talking about uh, just this Journey 2050 website. And, but I do use the National Ag in the Classroom website for several things. Um, and I noticed last year it was 9 billion people. And I noticed this year when uh, Dusty was, or uh, just a minute ago when Dusty was going through it, that it's for 10 billion people now. So population's going up. Okay, I'm gonna go back. Sorry, I was gonna take you to Mud in the Water. So we're gonna to go to Lessons. We're gonna go by title, because I know it starts with an, has mud in it. And there it is. It's for fifth, sixth, and eighth grade. It covers fifth, sixth, and eighth grade standards. Okay, this background is where I got some of my slide information. Here are the standards, the materials that you will need, and you will need glitter also. The glitter is, it represents fertilizer. And then these are the project, projects that you can do. Vocabulary, and then the actual directions for the project. And this is your finished product. Okay, 
So we're back to our ingredients or our materials. Uh, it calls for a razor knife, an exacto knife. If I'm doing this in the classroom, I might start, these plastic bottles are like trying to get a, something out of a package, like they package them in now, the, the hard plastic, and it's very hard to cut. So I might start a hole for them with the exacto knife and then let them finish it with scissors. Okay. Okay, so for this project, you're gonna have, you've gotta have four two liter bottles. And you're going to cut, if you, get out, if you get outside, take the label off the bottle and you get outside, you can see the seams down the side of the bottle. You're gonna cut down the seams on both sides. And then you're gonna cut, you're gonna leave part of this bottle and that just gives it stability because they're pretty, I'll show you in a little bit, they're pretty um, wobbly when you cut part of it out. And then you're gonna put sand in the bottom. And it tells you how much sand I used. It doesn't tell you an amount, it tells you like, uh, I think it says a half an inch of soil or of sand in the bottom. But I don't know, I'm thinking when I do it in the classroom, I'm gonna want to measure like maybe a cup and a half of sand so they all have the same. Okay, so here's your bottle with the sand. And here's a bottle with the sand is in the bottom and I've put this, the potting soil on top. Okay, and then you're gonna leave one just that way with the sand and the potting soil. The other one you're going to, you can put mulch, which this is bedding, animal bedding. You can put that in there. Um, you can plant grass. My grass hasn't sprouted yet. So it still looks just like this. Okay, those are two, that, that takes two bottles for those. Those are your trays. This is your base. And I know this is hard. I took 10 different pictures and this was the best one. It's just hard to see with a clear bottle. You're gonna take this pattern the tower hole pattern, and you're going to cut that out and you're gonna draw on each side of your bottle. So this is the back that we're looking at right now. And that is three inches from the bottom. And then you're gonna turn it around and you're gonna use that same pattern on the front. And it's only one and a half inches from the bottom. So here is your base now. I've cut the top out and I'll explain that in a minute. But this is your base. So you've got your, this is your back right here on the other side. And then you can't see, but there's a hole here on the front. And you put sand in the bottom for stability. Okay. Um, I'll show you in a little bit how to put this together. It's pretty self-explanatory though. You put one base in at a time, or one tray in at a time, and you're gonna have to sit it, set it on a, like a coffee can or just, because when your water comes out right here, it's gonna have to, you're gonna have to have, I, you'll need a bigger cup here. We're gonna put two cups of water in, so, but that's just, This bottle is actually, needs to be a two liter bottle. I thought I was being very smart and doing it this way so the kids could bring their water in with it already marked. I'd marked it two cups, but, and if we were in the classroom, I would ask you what's wrong with this picture. Um, the water's not gonna come out because you don't have any air holes up here. And that's something you could just let the kids figure out. So I have, now I have, I've got to cut this a little bit bigger. So, and you could even come down about this far so that when you put your two liter, half of your two liter bottle on it, it'll be stable. 
Okay, so then we're going to put glitter in this tray. Actually, we're going to put about a half a half of a lid of glitter in each tray. And then we're going to poke holes in this cap. And there are two cups of water in this bottle. And then you're just going to let it run. Just let it sprinkle and it's going to come out in this cup. And you want to keep the water in this cup because you're going to compare. Okay, so then you take your other tray and you do the same thing. You reload your bottle with two cups of water, put the glitter in your tray, and then you'll compare your cups when you get finished. Okay, these are the questions. These are the actual questions that are in the lesson. You're going to define erosion and other suggested vocabulary. What causes erosion? What problems can erosion cause? How can erosion be avoided? Where have students seen examples of erosion in your community? Okay, so this is in my backyard and the water comes down the downspout. And before these rocks were here, we were always having to go out and put our mulch back because it would erode it. And you can see back here, we do have the little, the little tube that'll take it out. It still doesn't work, okay? It comes out at the other end and still um, causes a hole. So we put these rocks down, and this is something that the kids could play with when they figure out, you know, they wanna try to problem solve. The first way we put the rocks down, it didn't change it. It still bounced off the rocks, hit the mulch and separated it. So we put this one up in front. So now when the water comes down, it hits the back of that rock and disperses out into different directions. So we've solved a problem in our backyard. This says suggests students plant different kinds of seed in the soil trays of their erosion models. So you could have the kids pick what they want um, to put in their trays. Not everybody has to do grass seed, so. Okay. Um, if you have any questions or need anything, there's my information. And I knew we would have time. So I was gonna look at the National Ag in the Classroom side. Is that okay? Yeah, absolutely. Go ahead and show them what you um, like on there and and uh, we'll share some other things on there as well. Okay, so and I've still I think got that's great. That I need to show you in, in person, so, um, but we've got plenty of time. Okay, uh, National Ag in the Classroom, the Teacher Center. I'm just going to hit the first three. These are the ones I use. Well, the first one and three, I guess. This is 360 Agriculture. Okay, these are virtual tours that the kids can take. Since we don't have them just right out the back door, it, it's kind of like going on a little va vacation. Hey, Connie, do you want yeah. to play one of those? Um, yeah. Just a portion of it, you don't have to do the whole thing, but just kind of show them what it looks like. These are great if you do happen to have the 3D Google virtual Google. goggles. It's Wayne to finish farm. This is where weaned piglets, or pigs at about 24 days old that no longer need their mother's milk, live in groups until they reach market weight. For the safety of our animals, all employees and visitors follow strict biosecurity procedures which prevent the spread of disease. These biosecurity measures include controlled entry to the farm, a shower in process, and a change into clean farm clothing and boots before coming in contact with our animals. These bio And if you do happen to have the, um, the 3D virtual goggles, then as they look around, you can see this is done with the 360 camera. So they're able to, um, to get a view of the whole hog barn. And Connie, for, for me, you're frozen. I'm not sure if you're frozen for everyone else or not. Is everyone there? <laughs> yes, I can't see her either. 
Okay, I think she froze up. Connie, if you can hear us, if you'll stop sharing your screen for just a little bit, the video may have locked you up. She looks like she was deep in thought when she got frozen. Um, I'm sure she'll be back with us in just a little bit. But those, um, those videos are filmed with a 360 degree camera. So if you happen to have virtual goggles, um, even the little cardboard ones, you can order cardboard virtual goggles, then those videos are filmed and they work very well. And the middle school students especially love them. So um, that is something to think about. And I'm gonna share a few resources until Connie gets back. I think she'll be joining us back in just a second. Um, hopefully she just had a little uh, lag in her service. Um, let me go to my desktop. A couple of resources that we have that we didn't show you and that Connie hasn't talked about. She talked about several of these, so that was great. But we also have new bookmarks. And so you can order a class set of these. Um, they'll come to you packaged. So this is the front and the back of the strawberry card. There's 25 different cards in a set. Um, so these just have fun facts on the back. They're great for using for a bookmark, but they're also great for research because they can take this, the fun fact that's on the back and then they could uh, research that fact and write, write more information about it. So we tried to cover all of the different commodities for Oklahoma um, that we could think of. There's even some unusual ones on here such as Sesame, Melody, any others that, that pop in your head? Melody worked hard on these. I'm giving her credit on this one. Um, I really love the Sesame. Um, I think that's a fun one uh, that surprises a lot of people. So um, if you don't know, we do grow Sesame here in Oklahoma and we even have a, uh, a processing plant it's down in Hobart. We have any Southwest Oklahoma friends with us. And so um, I think they're pretty good. Uh, we got this idea from the Louisiana um, Ag in the Classroom program. They had stuff like alligator and uh, crawfish, but we couldn't put those on ours. So and we left those out. But we, um, the things that we included are really fun. So you should get a set. Okay, and Connie said that she's back on. So, um... Honey, go ahead and turn your camera back on. Oh, I might have to hang on just a second, Connie. I'm coming to promote you. <laughs> Congratulations, you're promoted to a panelist. So I guess we won't have you share any more videos because I, I think that froze that. you up. <laughs> but I, didn't, I didn't panic. I got that over with in April when we were doing <laughs> School, so. I'm glad you came back for more. Yeah, oh, it's going to be <laughs> high and dry. Okay, so we'll share this. I think I was done with the screen though. Okay. Yeah, if you want to show them the next thing after the 360 degree video or uh, videos on the national okay. site. Okay. I've got all this stuff up above. I can't see where I'm at. It looks like on this one that your um, Ag in the Classroom site has closed out on you. So you might just want to. It might be. Sorry. You're fine. There we go. You should have just gone to the Okay, Teacher Center, uh, the Ag in the Classroom store. Yesterday was the first time I'd ever been to it. Oh my gosh. There are all of these already prepackaged. 
projects. Okay. And I would, but I'm not going to, you can go in and they've even got a video. So they show you how to put it together and how it works, but we won't try that again. And I just want to say to everyone on these, so everything that Oklahoma Ag in the Classroom has is free. This is the national site and they sell these, but the prices, you can't not beat them. And they deliver very quickly. We ordered some things from here and we got them in extremely fast, even right now during the COVID time. So now's the time to get on and be looking. Also, don't forget you can apply for Port Council grants and you can use that money to purchase things from the National Ag in the Classroom store. Awesome. The third one down is Ag Knowledge. Okay, these are little tests. Okay, where you can find out what your kids do know. Okay, what they don't know. And then with that being said, over on the student, cent student center, Ag Smarts lets them take, just take the test and it gives them their score. So the kids like that, that kind of uh, breaks the ice when we first start kind of see, see what they do. This career seeker. Okay. Um, you guys were talking about the new game, Career Opoly. Is that what it is? Yes, Career Opoly. And the Ag Explorer there um, on your screen, that's uh, the website that we used for a lot of the information for the Career Opoly game. Okay. Um, that's a great that's a great website. I've not been on the others. I'm excited that you're showing me this because I honestly don't often get on and search around on here because I'm in a hurry, just like everyone else. So this is fun for me right. too. Good. This has just little short videos and the kids can go through and see what they might want to do when they get older and start thinking about it. And there might be something they have no idea what it is. And so it's just a quick introductory video on what different fields are, um, in the ag world, they all think it's just a farmer. You know, they don't think about the banker and the, you know, and the, the get go. Okay, student back to student center, the games. And Dusty talked about this one, Journey 2050. I'm not even gonna try to go into it, but um, kids love that. And then I liked her idea where she said, when she has them play these games, they, uh, write a report on it or kind of a let other people know what, what to expect. Your state ag packs and your virtual tours. So that's just a little bit on the national ag site. Connie, will you click on this state ag facts so they can see what that looks like? Yes. This is a great, um, a great resource for your students. If you're having them do research about other states and comparing to Oklahoma, all of these are set up um, basically similar, but they each have their own unique spin. So ours was just updated. Um, most of the state should have just recently updated theirs. Um, National uh, keeps these um, on their website and has us up update them once a year. So they could do research on Oklahoma and then click other states and compare uh, maybe the population size or the crops that are grown there, the climate, just different things. They're all similar, but they have their own spin for each state. So this is a really great way um, for them to do research. And also, I know that we get letters sometimes from students that are doing research projects. They will contact us. All of the state contacts um, emails are located on this national website. So if your students are doing a research project, I would suggest reaching out to the state contacts and asking them about agriculture in their state. Uh, I'm sure that they're like we are and they would be glad to help. We'll oftentimes, if we get a letter from a student, we'll send them a resource or some special information. So, you know, I'm going to I'm going to guess that most everyone would be willing to do that as well. I know most of these and I think they would be glad to. Okay. Okay, so we're going to stop share. Okay, so I'm just gonna show you just a little bit. Um, here's the, the animal bedding that we use for the mulch. 
and these are your bases and see how if, if you would cut these ends off it would be pretty wobbly so that's just my sand and my soil and this is the sand soil and mulch and before long hopefully grass okay this is your base the back and the front cut out and the sand and it just fits through just like that of course you've got to set it on a base so you'll have room for your um, if you're going to use a 16.9 ounce bottle the caps on them are really hard to put a thumbtack through I just found that out um, but the ones on your two liter bottles they're thinner and they're easy for the kids to get those um, when you buy push pins I would buy colored ones because I've looked for this one for several times already just today so okay um, make sure you put your glitter in because that that is your fertilizer okay we we golf today and it's just amazing after you do um, a project like this how you see it out in the world um, not only in my backyard but we were um, at the golf course today and they've cut a lot of the grasses away from around the ponds and you can see that we picked a golf ball up today and it was blue so we knew they'd fertilized and that fertilizer is running down in the in the water and it's causing the algae to grow like crazy and the ponds are, are looks like you need to go out and stir it um, so it's it's causing the algae to grow um, at a faster rate so that in the heat so um, that's all I've got. Honey, I'm impressed. You go golf and then you come and present. That's, that's impressive. <laughs> I like the outside. All right. Does anyone have any questions for Connie? You've done a great job. Thanks for coming back too. Whenever you had the technical oh, difficulty no there. <laughs> anyone uh, have any questions? Hey. Melody, did you hear her? You might say it again, Connie. Happy birthday. <laughs> no, I didn't hear that because I was busy trying to change from all panelists over to all panelists and attendees because I have one job and I can't do it right. <laughs> Thank you so much. You're welcome. I was typing. You did a great job. Thank you. you. Enjoyed everything that you shared. And I, I appreciate that you shared uh, that there's so much on our website because I think sometimes we just all get in the little uh, track that we we go to this part we go to that part so it's really worth exploring if you have time so thanks for it. sharing that piece. it's wonderful thank you all right and I saw that someone commented about copying the back and making a concentration game I'm thinking maybe you were talking about the bookmarks but I'm not sure but uh, I I think that's about the time of the presentation so I think that is a great idea um, it looks like everyone's given you nice comments that you did a great job. We appreciate you. We're going to go ahead and close this one out and give everyone just a little bit of an extended break so you can um, take a break and come back and join us for our final session. We've got one more today and it's Johnny Keel and Lori Newmark and you don't want to miss it. So thank you for joining us. Thanks again, Connie. Great job. Welcome. Thank you.